This is Dr. Navul Davar. I'm Assistant Professor in Department of Leukemia at MD Anderson, and I will be briefly touching upon the highlights from this year's ASCO National Meeting on what's new in acute leukemia. First, I would like to describe a study that was presented by Dr. Lin and colleagues looking at the combination of low-dose cytarabine with venetoclax in elderly patients. This was a very informative study. Venetoclax is a drug that has been used in AML now for the last three to four years. Single agent activity of venetoclax was shown by our group where it had a 20% response rate, and uh, there are two ongoing combination studies of this agent. One is a hypomethylator plus venetoclax that is showing extremely high response rates, uh, greater than 70% in older unfit population, which is an uh, excellent response. And then the other study is the one Dr. Lin presented at ASCO, which is a combination of venetoclax plus low-dose in patients above 65 years of age who are not eligible for standard high-dose induction therapy. The study has so far enrolled a total of 26 patients, and uh, the median age, which is notable, is 75 years of age. So these are older patients who traditionally would not tolerate high-dose chemo and have a poor outcome and survival. Also, a lot of these patients had a background hematological disorder, 46% of them, which is another high-risk feature. So all in all, relatively high-risk group of older patients with a prior hematological disorder. And in this group, they were able to achieve a complete remission rate of almost 55%. Now, um, historically, the remission rate or CRCRI rate with lodocytarabine alone has been between 7 and 10%. So 55% is dramatic improvement, and uh, most of this would be attributed to the uh, venetoclax. They also saw that the combination was well tolerated, especially in these older patients uh, with a majority of the population above 70 years. Tolerability is a critical issue, almost as important as efficacy. And the main grade 3, 4 toxicities were neutropenia, which is actually an on-target effect of venetoclax and uh, did not result in uh, patients coming off study or severe long-term complications. So the uh, study continues to enroll We remain very excited about the response rates of 55% CRCRI in 70-plus patients with this well-tolerated combination, and I'm sure we will be having more updates on this study soon. The second study in AML that got a lot of highlights and is an important study for the field is a new drug called CPX351, which is a fixed-dose formulation of the two drugs that have been used most commonly in AML, which are irubicin and cytarabine. And this study was initially a phase one and phase two studies with this agent that showed that it had selective activity, especially in patients who had secondary AML or AML arising from a prior amyelodysplastic syndrome. It's important to know that these patients are usually very hard to treat and have very poor outcomes. And uh, secondary AML has uh, been one of the most difficult diseases to improve over the last 30 years of AML research. So the breakthrough of uh, CPX when it went into a phase 3 study looking at either CPX351, which was the investigational arm, versus 7 plus 3 in patients 60 to 75 years of age who had a high-risk AML. And the high-risk AML was defined as patients who either had a prior MDS or CMML and had prior treatment for it, or they had prior therapy for another cancer and progressed to AML. And so in these patients, the CPX was given to 153 patients as compared to 156 who got 7 plus 3, and the patients were pretty balanced uh, looking at the baseline characteristics of importance, such as age, performance status, and cytogenetic risk group. And the CPX clearly outperformed the 7 plus 3 in almost all of the primary and secondary objectives evaluated including significantly improved overall survival, event-free survival, as well as the CRCRI rate in this high-risk secondary AML population. The toxicities of CPX were equivalent, and the 30- and 60-day mortalities were actually lower, although not significantly lower, than 7 plus 3. So all in all, we believe that this data supports uh, CPX351 in uh, secondary as well as therapy-related high-risk AML as a standard approach in uh, comparison to 7 plus 3. I would like to discuss a very interesting paper and data from our center looking at a new treatment option in Philadelphia-positive acute lymphoblastic leukemia. 
as a background, Philadelphia positive acute lymphoblastic leukemia is a uh, aggressive form of leukemia, and the Philadelphia positive variant makes up about 20 to 30 percent of all acute lymphoblastic leukemia. Patients with a Philadelphia positive acute lymphoblastic leukemia tend to have an inferior overall survival as well as an inferior response to treatment as compared to those who do not have Philadelphia chromosome mutated ALL. In the recent decade, there have been new drugs such as desatinib, imatinib, and ponatinib that target the Philadelphia positive chromosome mutation and are able to reverse the negative impact of this mutation and have resulted in improved survival. We initially did a study of hypersevan and desatinib at MD Anderson, which showed that we could improve the response rates to about 60%, as well as improve the overall survival. At this ASCO meeting, we presented a comparison of our older study of hypersevan and desatinib versus our newer combination with hypersevan and ponatinib. Ponatinib is a newer generation tyrosine kinase inhibitor that has a broader and more potent efficacy than desatinib. What we did see in the study was in the uh, matched patients who received hypersevad ponatinib versus a very similar group of patients who received the hypersevad and desatinib, the hypersevad ponatinib outperformed the hypersevad desatinib in all criteria, including the complete cytogenetic responses at CR, the molecular response rates at CR, as well as the event-free survival and overall survival. In all of these outcomes, the hypersevad ponatinib showed significant overall improvement as compared to the hypersevan and desatinib. Also, one point to highlight was the three-year overall survival with the hypersevan and ponatinib in what is historically a high-risk group was 83%, which is the best ever three-year overall survival that has been seen in Philadelphia positive ALL and is extremely noteworthy with almost four out of five patients staying alive at three years suggesting that this combination may revolutionize the treatment of Philadelphia-positive ALL and needs to be evaluated now in a randomized large study. Thank you.